to go out and, and do the yeah. I ask you to help us to make wise decisions and to do this in the in the spirit that, that you would want us to do it. We ask all these things in your son's name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Turn and face your flag and repeat after me. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Do I ask to get my screen up? Screen's not up. Motion to adopt the minutes of regular session of May 22nd. And moved and seconded. Thank you. Mike's seem like they're pretty active today, so. Uh, okay. Everybody please vote. What are we voting for? And that passes. Special resolutions, Mr. Clerk. Yes, sir. We do have one uh, in the memory of Dr. Harold Petaway. Mr. Smith, did you want to introduce this? I'd be happy to. Uh, ask their nephew to come on down. Oh, no. Harold Jr., come on up. And at this time, I'd like to ask the commissioners to please stand. This is Mrs. Alma Pennyway. Anyway, she's the widow of Dr. Pennyway. Uh, I've known her for some time now. And uh, for those of you on the commission know that worked on the sewer district out there at sewer district number eight, which you approved as one of our projects this year. Still hadn't got our money. Ms. Alma and I are never giving up. We think we're still going to make it. This is Harold Jr., her son. These people uh, live in my district, and I've known them before I became a commissioner. And I've told them today, I've heard a lot of good things about them from rich people, poor people, black, white. I've never heard one derogatory comment. I've always said what Dr. Pettaway and Ms. Pettaway did for them to help them as they grew up and as they tried to get their education. They, these people are strong supporters of our community in Caddo Parish and really our state. And I might say Herschel is their nephew. Uh, yes, and uh, I'm the nephew of Dr. Charlie Pitt. Something that you may not know. Also was my sixth grade teacher. Secondly, he is a good outstanding was a good outstanding. Thank y'all for this family job. Thank you again. Resolution of remembrance of Dr. Harold E. Petaway. Whereas the Caddo Parish Commission joins with family, friends, associates, and the entire Caddo Shreveport community to reflect upon the remarkable life and works of Dr. Harold Edward Petaway and to gauge the depth of the loss attending his passing on April 26, 2008 at the age of 74. And whereas Dr. Petaway was a native of the Spring Ridge community in Caddo Parish to which he ultimately returned until the time of his death. He attended Caddo Parish Public Schools, graduating from Booker T. Washington High School. He earned a Bachelor of Science degree as well as a Master of Education degree in Supervision and Administration from Southern University. In 1988, he retired from the Caddo Parish School System after 30 years of outstanding and dedicated service as an educator. Whereas, led by a thirst for greater spiritual understanding, he acquired a Doctorate of Theology and Biblical Theology from Andersonville Baptist Seminary. He practiced and demonstrated his faith as a lifelong member of the New Hill Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. He served there in many capacities, including chairman of the steward board, chairman of trustees, superintendent of Sunday school and vacation Bible school, lay leader, and others. Whereas Dr. Petaway was a man whose character, wisdom, and strength were such that his guidance was often <coughs> his guidance was often sought, his opinion was always valued, and his friendship was treasured. 
in every aspect of his professional, religious, and personal life. His leadership was an inspiration to others, and his actions were always a reflection of the quiet, gentlemanly demeanor that characterized him as a man. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Cattle Parish Commission that it does hereby express its solemn and heartfelt sense of loss at the passing of Dr. Harold Edward Petaway, and it lauds his memory and his legacy of exemplary contributions and achievements. It further resolved that the Commission does extend to Dr. Petaway's wife, Alma, and their son, Harold, and other family members, friends, and associates its most sincere expressions of condolence and regret and prayers that their sorrow will be tempered and comforted by the knowledge and certainty of life everlasting beyond this veil. So move. Second by the chair. You, the resolution to you and Harold on our behalf, and we appreciate you coming today. Appreciate all you've done for us. Good after. That motion does pass without exception. exception. Yes, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> Reports and communiques. Sir. President Cox, commissioners, good afternoon. I have uh, placed at your station several documents, the first of which is from Comcast, just informing you all that there will be some changes in their uh, channel selections and lineup. The second document I'd like to uh, call your attention to is uh, this in a letter to the shelf creator asking him that uh, Commissioner Pearson and David Cox be allowed to participate in his upcoming um, meetings to talk about the prison overcrowding condition. And the third item I have for you all to station, uh, Commissioner Lynch requested the copies of the letters that the sheriff had sent us in the past, and I include that for you at your stations also. Uh, one last item under the uh, my report is for those who did not attend the uh, Juvenile Justice Subcommittee meeting today, I put at your station a copy of the article out of the uh, NACL newsletter of, uh, dated uh, the 2nd of June which talks about the Miami-Dade Juvenile Justice System Reform National Model. This is similar to our JDDI, JDDI initiative. And I appreciate if you read this because uh, it just talks about what could come out of this process when we are finished with it and the benefits of it. And that concludes my report, sir. Okay. Uh, suspend the rules and allow visitors. So moved. And moved by Commissioner Escadade, second by the chair. Out. Without exception, I have two cards today. Uh, we'll go with Mark Millsap first. Mark, if you will, please come forward. And before the meeting, uh, before we go too much further, if you have a cell phone or or anything, please turn it on vibrate or silent, sir. If you would, please state your name, address. Good afternoon, uh, Commission. My name is Mark Millsap. I'm the advertising director at the Times here in Shreveport. Um, I was here to uh, discuss a little bit or, or tell you a little bit about the uh, Shreveport Times uh, since we have uh, bid on the uh, to be the official legal publication for the commission. Is that doable? Is that, is that okay? Yes. Okay. Just want to make sure. I've got a handout, um, a, a quick one sheet handout that I'd like to pass out. You can go ahead while they're passing okay. out. A couple things I want to point out um, first and foremost is uh, the Shreveport Times reach, uh, we, we reach more Caddo residents uh, than any other legal vehicle out there in this market. 65% um, of the Caddo Parish residents read our paper in the last seven days or read our paper in the last seven days. 65% uh, that is a equivalent to over 123,000 residents in Caddo Parish that have read uh, our paper in the last uh, seven days. I wanted to have a breakdown there of uh, black and white residents just to say that we have a diverse readership. 
And so I want to make sure that you understood that, where 52% of the residents uh, that read our paper in the last seven days were white and that 44% were black. 40% um, of Cattle re uh, Parish residents read our newspaper yesterday. So I want to make sure that you understood that 75,000, over 75,000 readers read our paper, or Cattle residents read our paper yesterday. 49% um, of the Cattle Parish residents read our paper last Sunday. So I say all this stuff to tell you that the Times uh, would like to be the vehicle of choice for your legal so that we get out to the maximum number of residents of Caddo. Times as a whole, circulation, when you talk about the number of newspapers on the, str on the street, Sunday, there's 68,000. Daily, there's 57,000. That's over 172,000 adults that have read the Times in the, once in the last seven days. I want to also talk to you that the Times is, is as flexible as you need to be and that we publish seven days a week. We're there for you to get your legal notices in every single day, Monday through Friday. But we publish seven days a week, so those legal notices can be read seven days a week by the Caddo res residents. The deadlines are user-friendly. We're only about two days out uh, on deadlines. So an example is if, we call, if, if you call today for the legal notice, we could have that in by Saturday already published. On pricing, uh, I know that uh, some, some competitors um, that, you, that you, uh, you have, competitors for us, but other legal vehicles in town, um, their pricing may be a little bit uh, inexpensive uh, compared to us. They may be, uh, cost a little bit less. But I want to tell you that uh, your uh, pricing well, it's just as, as, as any, anyone else's municipality, um, school board, uh, is 27 cents per agate line. I wanted to let you know that we haven't had a rate increase in three years. We haven't raised our rates. We haven't increased our rates in that in, in the last three years. And I also did some research um, looking at the uh, Louisiana statutes uh, to find out what the, what the pricing cap was. The pricing cap, according to Louisiana statutes, is 33 cents. So we could be charging 33 cents. We choose not to. We choose to get that out, your word out there, for 27 cents a line. Again, other people might be a little bit cheaper, but again, we reach the maximum amount of people in Caddo Parish. Okay. Last uh, last item there is uh, the uh, timing. Um, since I was here at the uh, workshop meeting and uh, heard Miss uh, uh, Commissioner Jenkins' uh, question about can you offer, uh, can you? Uh, do multiple years for the uh, award the bid for multiple years for, for the journal I found out that you can't and the, uh, the statute is listed right here that you do have to do it in one year increments so it can't be multiple years sir okay um, so my uh, request to you is that that uh, the times uh, become the legal official official legal vehicle of this of this parish of this commission and I, I ask if there is any questions, if I can do that. Can't do that now? Okay, sorry. That's okay. That's it? That's it. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Our next uh, visitor today is Mary Haddix. Mary? If you would please state your name and address. My name is Mary Haddix, and I'm with the Caddo Citizen Newspaper in Vivian. The address is 203 South Spruce, Vivian. Um, I just want to thank you for this opportunity to have served you in the past year as your official legal journal, and we look forward to the opportunity to do it again. Um, I just wanted to let you know that um, the Shreveport Sun and the Caddo Citizen are in an exclusive joint venture to, to partner again and serve you. Uh, I believe that we offer the commission not only a lower price, but we offer you a, a more, um, a better service. We're, we're focused on the Cattle Parish Commission. Just this past week, Vita had a change, and we actually stopped the press to make a paragraph change just for, just for you guys, because you're our top customer. We're focused on making you happy. Yes, we're a weekly newspaper. Yes, our, subs our subscriptions are, um, our readership's not as expansive as the Times. But we make up for that by uploading all of your legal notices on the World Wide Web to a centralized location where anybody who wants to look for a, a public notice can find your public notices among others at other papers at any time, day or night. Um, 
we believe that running your legal notices in one publication a week and, com and having it in a one publication makes it easier for readers to find. Um, with the Shreveport Time, I mean, with the Shreveport Sun, they have racks all over Shreveport. They, they cover Shreveport and we cover North Caddo. We feel like we offer you a good coverage base. Anybody can subscribe to the Caddo Citizen. It, it, it's accessible. It's not inaccessible, it's accessible. Um, we offer you your notarized proof of publications at no extra charge. Most places charge about $10 for um, legal notarized proof of publication. We offer you free subscriptions. If you need three or four or five subscriptions, we can give you that. Um, when you support the, the Caddo Citizen and the Shreveport, Time, uh, Shreveport Sun, you support a minority-owned business in Shreveport and a minority-managed ma business in Vivian. You support two small businesses in two different locations, covering Caddo Parish and Shreveport. Um, again, we have really enjoyed serving as your legal journal in the past and this past year, and we really want to keep your business. So we pray that you consider uh, the, the, the Citizen Sun. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, yes. Uh, before we go back into our regular session, will, will either one of those persons be uh, allowed to come back on the new business if a commissioner has questions for yes. them? I just want them to know that so they wouldn't leave just yeah. in case yeah, they have some questions. When that for comes back up under new business, we can't call them back up. <coughs> okay. Okay. Uh, before we go back to uh, uh, our public hearings, there was one thing in uh, communication reports that I did not. Uh, let happen and I apologize for that uh, Ms. Lynch you had a report on the juvenile justice yes the juvenile justice committee met today and, and I wanted to first of all thank my colleagues for passing the resolution at our last meeting uh, reaffirming our commitment to the JDAI program <clears throat> and to juvenile justice reform uh, in our meeting today uh, we voted to recommend to the entire body to do uh, to recommend that that we follow through with all of the necessary tools to make this initiative successful and at our next meeting we'll be bringing forth a budget amendment um, to to fund uh, a couple of positions at our next meeting so and you will also be getting some additional information a JDAI starter kit as well as uh, a facility assessment uh, manual as well so We'll be getting that to everyone in the next uh, couple of weeks, within the next couple of weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have a motion to go back in public hearing. So moved, second. Moved and second by Commissioner Escadet, Commissioner Pearson, without exception. <coughs> Mr. Spears. Yes, sir. Public hearing on Ordinance 4771, amend your general fund budget to provide appropriation for salaries for constables and justices of the peace. Is there anyone here to speak on behalf of this? Is there anyone to speak against this? Mr. Spears? Ordinance 4772 declares certain adjudicated property to be surplus and authorized sale of the tax interest therein. Is anyone here to speak for this? Anyone here to speak against this? Mr. Spears? Ordinance 4755 amends your code of ordinances to delineate additional grounds for denial of applications for beer and or liquor licenses. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of this? <clears throat> Is there anyone here to speak against this? Mr. Spears? That ends the public hearing. Now we'll move right back through those same ordinances for final consideration. Ordinance 4770, code of ordinances uh, relative to limited access gates. That was carry over from the previous meeting. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded by Commissioner Dominic, Commissioner Pearson. Any questions? Any discussion? If not, please vote. <coughs> that passes. Mr. Spears? Ordinance 4771, amend your general fund to provide a adjustment for the constables and JPs. Move. Second. Been moved by Commissioner Dominic, second by Commissioner Smith. Any questions? Any discussion? <coughs> please vote. And that passes. Mr. Spears? Ordinance 4772, sells adjudicated property. So moved. Second. And moved by Commissioner Lynch, second by Commissioner Pearson. Any questions? Any discussion? If not, please vote. Mr. 
Jenkins, Mr. Smith, Ms. <coughs> Ms. McCullough. And that passes. Mr. Spears. Ordinance 4755 amends your code of ordinances relative to beer and liquor licenses. Second. And moved by Commissioner Smith, second by Commissioner Jenkins. Any questions? Epperson. That's good aid. Oh, I'm sorry. Epperson. Any discussion? If not, please vote. And that passes. Mr. Spears. Yes, next. It's actually not a zoning ordinance. This is just an appeal that you will be hearing at your July 3rd meeting. Uh, Clark and Cheryl McAllister, applicants appellants, and requesting uh, five accessory structures okay. on the existing lot. Next, uh, ordinances for introduction by title. First one, was ordinance 4773, amend your general funding group What's insurance fund move, budget. Mr. President. It's introduction. Was introduction by title. Uh, to appropriate $600,000 for health claims, ordinance 4774, means your group insurance fund budget in the amount of $1,075,000 for health claims and insurance premiums in the amount of $50,000. Ordinance 4775 creates the oil and gas fund and to dedicate all income received for oil and gas leases and production for the past three years that was not budgeted prior to immediately be placed into this fund and place all future oil and gas income into this fund. Ordinance 4776 authorizes the administrator to execute an agreement with an amendment to an intergovernmental agreement with the clerk of court, first judicial district, uh, as previously or authorized by Ordinance 4507 pertaining to the clerk's assumption of duties as ex officio clerk of the juvenile court. I have a motion to adopt the minutes of June 2nd. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Thibodeau, second by Commissioner Escadet. Any questions? If not, please vote. And that passes. Resolutions, Mr. Clerk? Resolution 21 to sell or donate property owned by the parish of Caddo to an organization or citizen while retaining the mineral rights to said property. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Dominic, second by Commissioner Escadade. Any questions? I have one. Yes, sir. Mr. Pearson. Does that in itself um, designate a time? I think on, on our work session, we talked about beginning at a certain time. I was just sitting out there. You can read it. This has been made on or after June 2nd, 2008. For a movable property, and it'll be donated, it'll be anything that's pending. Anything that's what? Yeah, it says uh, for, it says in, um, as far as sale of immovable property, it says that all sales of cattle pairs and movable property which application has been made on or after June 2nd, the parish shall retain all mineral rights associated with the parish property being sold. Okay. And in the next paragraph, it says, uh, uh, be further resolved that effective immediately on all donations of removal property, the parish shall retain the mineral rights associated. So I think that's exactly how we talked about it and asked for it to be drawn up. Okay. Mr. Brown? Uh, Councilor, did you get in touch with? Did you get in touch with others with the city of Shreveport about what we talked about in our past meeting, uh, Commissioner Brown? I did have another conversation with uh, the assistant city attorney that's reviewing these same issues, and I don't want to speak for her, but she doesn't. She she expressed that she had no disagreement. She's still looking at it. She has no dis disagreement with what I've advised y'all by email. She has copies of all of them. Uh, we have discussed the fact that there are other issues that might have to be addressed in the future, such as uh, adjudic properties that have been adjudicated to both bodies. If if any revenue comes in, how do we share those revenues and that sort of thing? But that's for. Those are issues to be decided later, but I guess the best way I can answer your question is they're still reviewing it, but every indication I get is that there's really no substantive dis disagreements between the city's legal staff and, and your legal staff. Okay, I see no other questions. If not, please vote. <clears throat> and that passes. 
Old business? Uh, none on the agenda, sir. New business? Uh, yes, sir. Today's the day you select an official journal for the next fiscal year. Uh, I have a question for uh, from Mr. Jenkins. I, I wanted to uh, ask a question of the representative <coughs> from uh, the Shreveport Times, if it's appropriate to ask that question now. Uh, Prior to any motions being made. Well, we be need a motion first. Move to accept the Times as the official journal for Second. Cato Parish. Been moved and seconded by Commissioner Lynn, mm -hmm. seconded by Commissioner Escadade as the Times to represent us as our official journal. I'll make a substitute motion that Cato Citizen be the uh, official journal. Cato mm -hmm. Citizen's uh, son will be the official journal. Well, and then we, ha we have a substitute motion from Commissioner Dominic, seconded by Commissioner Pearson, that the Cato Citizen be in our official journal. Okay. And discussion and at this time I'm going to excuse myself for a few minutes our vice president uh, Ms. Lynch will take over uh, Commissioner Jenkins yes I, I, madam Pre president if it's appropriate I'd like for the gentleman that spoke on behalf of the Shreveport Times to come forward I had a question I wanted to ask of uh, the gentleman here Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You, you appear to be somewhat familiar with the legal statutes uh, governing these official journals now. There are provisions <coughs> those same statutes uh, that can provide uh, not only for an official journal, but for what's called an auxiliary official journal. And uh, that's an alternate journal, journal that can be used. But here's the caveat to it. Uh, if we publish something in that auxiliary <coughs> journal, uh, we cannot pay anything more than what we would pay to the official journal to publish it. Now, uh, what's been presented to us is a difference in uh, what the Times charges, which is 27 cent, and what the uh, Citizen Sun is proposing, which is 23 cent. My okay. question is uh, if some consideration could be given to the Times to be the auxiliary official journal, uh, would it be willing to reduce its rate to the 23 cent? Would it be willing to publish legal notices for 23 cent? I guess I'm not sure what you mean by auxiliary journal. Are you publishing it in both? We won't, we won't be mandated to publish it in both. Say, for instance, we'll pick and choose uh, based upon what the notice was. Based upon what the notice was, and based upon uh, time frames that may be involved, because uh, the Citizen Sun is a weekly uh, publication. The Times is a daily publication. Yes, and sir. There could be occasions where. Uh, the need may arise for us to uh, get a, a notice out, uh, you know, prior to a week passing by. Right. But the, what, here's what the situation is, though. We would not be able to pay an auxiliary a, a penny more than what we would pay the official journal to publish that same notice. Correct. So my question is, you know, would the, would the Times be willing to uh, charge the same rate that the, that the official journal would charge, which would be 23 cents? I think we would have to give that some consideration. I think from a standpoint of if you're using both publications and really with the with the Sun, I believe it's, it's two publications, the Sun and, and the Citizen, um, for, for Caddo Parish residents to understand that it might be in this uh, publication sometimes and it might be over here in the Times uh, another time. I, I don't know if that is going to be the best thing for the residents. Well, now, whatever, what, whatever we're going to print or whatever we're going to publish, it's going to go to the official journal. Now, there may be some occasions where uh, a notice for time's sake needs to be published, and it, it can be published in an auxiliary journal. If you follow what I'm saying, it's not going to be sometime the minutes in this one and sometime the minutes in that one. That's not going to happen. Okay. Whatever's well, the official journal is going to get that. Okay? okay. What the auxiliary journal can get is notices. Uh, we can have the option to also put a notice in that auxiliary journal on the subject of what we're trying to get notification out to the public on. So it's not. It's, it's going to be one official journal. This one just would, would Correct. have some additional. I guess I, I would respectfully request that we be the official journal as opposed to the auxiliary journal in, in that situation. Um, but I, I understand the question that uh, on, the, on the rate, uh, if you will. Um, I, 
I guess, I guess the answer is going to have to be no today. It, would we, if we, if we're the auxiliary, that we would um, change the rate? Again, respectfully requesting that we not be the auxiliary, but the official journal. All right now, I understand. That's what that's what I need. Okay. To know. Yes, Thank sir. you, Madam President. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Lynn. How many locations around town, other than the locations that you deliver to people's homes, are there to get the times? Talking in 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 in, in, Cato, in Cato Parish. Circle K's. How many? How widespread is it? If you don't mind, let me uh, uh, look at my publisher, uh, Pete Zanmiller, and say. So that's your, but that is in store in Circle K's and Walmart's and uh, and then also the racks outside, like uh, the government building right here. So 175. Okay, is a working number for us in the, the parish. Do you have any other questions, Commissioner? Lane? That's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Commissioner Dominique. Well, I just wanted to um, ask our uh, parish attorney. Clear up the auxiliary issue too. Um, you and I talked about it a little bit about how that actually would work if it could work. Commissioners, the the commission does have, as Mr. as Commissioner Jenkins said, the commission does have the prerogative to select a, an auxiliary journal under the statute. Uh, there's three things I'd point out. One, you can publish in the auxiliary journal any notices or advertisements that require more than one publication you, you have to publish one in in the official journal but you could publish the second one if you will in the uh, auxiliary journal and in that way you, you would not be spending any additional funds the statute also authorizes you to basically duplicate publications you can uh, publish in the auxiliary journal uh, the same things that you publish in the official journal but that would of course require additional expenditures and the third point I want to make is if you have an auxiliary journal and I think Mr. Commissioner Jenkins may have already said this but if you have an auxiliary journal the, the rate that you pay for your advertising in it cannot exceed the rate that you pay for the official journal. Is it, are you finished, Commissioner? Yeah, that's all. I just okay. All righty, uh, Commissioner Escaday. Have you broken down and looked at this, say, in uh, uh, cost per thousand? Absolutely, sir. What um, are those figures? How much does it cost per thousand uh, readers? Reach somebody in the citizen, and how much does it cost through the time? We do, and I mean, I don't want to speak for the citizen, of course, but I, I can tell you that that my research shows that we are uh, seventy-five percent lower on a cost per thousand basis with the number of uh, readers that we have and the number of papers on the street. Um, again, that's seventy-five percent lower when you do a cost per thousand. So you are seeing that it's four cents a line uh, higher. But again, with the amount of people that we reach, the maximum amount of people we reach in the Caddo Parish, 75% uh, lower on a cost per thousand basis. Would, um, does this, uh, is this information, would it be published or put on, on your website, times.com or whatever? Absolutely. That was one thing I was going to, uh, to say also. If, uh, if, if you look at the bid, I don't know if you have that with you, but I have copies if you'd like to see it. But one item in our bid under other information, it states that all legals published in the Times will appear online at ShreveportTimes.com, as well as all legals uh, will be listed on the LPA or Louisiana Press Association's website. So we're actually doing another service by putting it on our website, which has over 400,000 unique visitors every single month looking on our website. Um, and then you're also getting the uh, free uh, notice on the Louisiana Press Association where you can go and look at all public notices uh, by, uh, by publication or by city or by uh, uh, parish. Yes, sir. We do both of those. Basically, your position is it's uh, your line cost is a little more, your upfront cost is a little more, but you, you reach a whole lot more people. 
Absolutely, and that's and that's the biggest thing that I want you to understand that we have the val the value proposition here is that we reach the most people in Caddo Parish, and with your legal notices, we treat those as gold to get those out to the num to the maximum number of people that you need to reach your constituents. Yes, that's sir. It's kind of like you can um, buy a dozen ribeyes and pay eight dollars a pound for them, or you can buy the whole cow and pay a little more for the cow but feed a lot more people. Absolutely, sir. Thank you. You should be a lawyer, John. You were leading the witness. No, I don't wear leggings. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. One, one, one follow-up. 200 racks. We just found out. Racks 200 racks in Caddo Parish. How many people did you say visited the website a day? Over 400,000 unique visitors monthly. On a month's time, we have 400 unique mm -hmm. visitors coming to our website. And what I mean by unique visitors is... Um, it's, it, it's not the same person coming uh, every single time. It's, it's you coming to the website, uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Carl here, uh, uh, Commissioner Jenkins. Uh, it's all, all, all of you are counted once, not coming back to that site every day. So over 400,000 in a month's time, sir. Any other questions? Okay. We'll be voting on the substitute motion first, which is um, Cattle the Cattle sign. Citizen sign as the official journal. Right. Right. Okay. Please vote. Yes, for day. <laughs> okay. Let's see. That's six five. Six yes. Yes. One out of the chamber passes. Next item, Mrs. Spears. Uh, yes. Um, Pass. Res okay. It approves security enhancements for Governor Plaza. Thanks, sir. Approved security items. Okay. Are you moving that? By Commissioner Escadet. I'd like to make a motion that we adopt the recommendations okay. of um, the uh, study committee on this and forward them for the city council to the city council for their approval with one minor change. Um, if I can get a second on it, that change being. Second. Okay. Moving to seconded. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you where the change. I mean, yeah. Let me tell you where the change is. Uh, received a phone call from the sheriff, and after they've <coughs> reviewed this a little bit further, they recommend. Let me see where we can go here. Um. On the. Uh, Security station in the lobby that on number one item line item number one under the under lobby the page meant at this time that once the uh, security station is set up and, and the deputies are there and they have their monitors they don't feel that it's immediately necessary that we have all visitors sign in they think this may create traffic congestion they think that since they will be there greeting the people and directing people that that would be adequate and they ask if we just if they, they they like all the rest of it except that that one line so i'd like to I propose that we move that forward with the deletion of that one last paragraph in number one it's going to be deleted we're just that made in the lobby interest then yeah under under lobby what item number one that, last sentence all visitors shall shine sign in and state their business if we just strike that out they don't feel it's necessary at this time they're very happy with the rest of it just for okay. your information okay so we That's have a, a, we have a motion and second on that <clears throat> are there any questions yeah i don't see any names please vote Commissioner Lynch, who made the motion and second on? John made it. I second it. Mm -hmm. Well, I had to put it in. Okay, let me up. And so we'll note, Mr. Spears, this okay. needs to be passed along to the City Council for their concurrence. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you. 
Is there any other uh, new business? Any commissioners? Move to adjourn. Okay. Meetings adjourned. <laughs>